I am C. Meek Smeeker, and I am the keeper of this Brundlewood Bay campaign. It's 1997 in Brundlewood Bay, and it's been a few weeks since fish fry filleted or filleted, depending on your poison and where you're from. Uh, Eddie Rue, let's start with you. Hi, uh, I'm Chris Dierksen, and I'm playing Eddie Rue Dubois. Uh, and, and it's been a few weeks since the fish fried filleted. Uh, uh, where I made friends with a murderer. <laughs> Baby. Hi, I am Baby Garcia, played by Corey Flores. And in our downtime since the last fish capades, I decided to start a garden. Didn't realize that the seeds that I bought from the kids on the street were something else. And I made some very high tea. I have been unconscious for two days. I'm fine. Just needed some sleep. <laughs> Uh, I love that. Uh, Doris. Uh, hi, I'm Shannon Wade. I'm playing Doris Makoviak, who is a retired park ranger. And something that happened in our last mystery was that I uh, entertained some small children by teaching them about potentially poisonous plants. <laughs> Education's important, y'all. It's real important. Lane. Uh, I'm Ben Ferber. I play Lane Walter, who is a uh, a former Broadway actress who uh, last time uh, helped solve the mystery alongside uh, the murder mavens and uh, was blessed to give the here's who did it monologue uh, amidst a, a family of weird perverts named after mythological characters. <laughs> uh, amazing. Um so it has been a few weeks since our previous solve. Uh, things have returned to normal in Brindlewood Bay as the summer leaves and the fall takes hold. It's September now, uh, uh, which means the summer people have finally left. And everyone is anticipating the fall show at the Brindlewood Bay Community Players, their first show since Helen Mooney, the previous artistic director and owner, unfortunately died. Her daughter, Mabel, took over the production, though, and she's very excited to have the Murder Mavens come to a special invited dress rehearsal this evening. You have all decided to meet for a late lunch before the show at the local cafe Cup of Nothing, but the morning is yours. So let's check in with our Mavens. How is it all cozy? How is it cozy and gang? Let's check in with your cozy activity. Let's start with you this time, Lane. What you got? Uh, yes, Lane is sitting in uh, a comfortable and uh, maybe 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 needs to be reupholstered chair um, watching. It's either the live broadcast of or a recording of the CBS Sunday morning show. Um, she, between the mystery and now, was invited to come down uh, to their studio in New York and record a little bit for a retrospective they were doing on the recently retired director, Darren Pike, who did direct the final play she was in. Uh, she puts her feet up and then sees the only thing that made it from her interview, which is uh, Charles Osgood says, uh, hello, Miss Walter. And she says, so did they play the trumpet live? Uh, and then she does not appear for the rest of the segment. Uh, she did storm out of the set after he asked what happened in that final play. Uh Excellent. Uh, while she's watching this, uh, this interview that was obviously cut short, and she, does she sit through the whole thing while she's not? Yeah, I mean, she's just watching like other people that she knew, like interviewed at much more length about this director she worked with for much of her life. Yeah, um, she gets this like flash while she's t while she's watching this, um, I guess, because, you know, she's thinking about Darren Pike. And that's reminding her of the um, local director in town, Jones Galois, um, the sexiest fuck salt and pepper knight with an ego that knocks things over, um, who maybe you've worked with, but you've definitely seen around. And as you get this sort of lovely image in your head of the last time you saw him shouting at people about lights, no doubt, um, in that loin grabbing way, the image all of a sudden turns from uh, from this kind of sexy domineering force to um, a face that turns towards you. And it looks like he's missing an eye where his eye should be is an empty socket oozing blood and pus. And then the moment's gone and you're watching the CBS again. And this and is the Lane is out of the room. She has seen this and instinctually bolted in the other direction, reminded of something that she was reminded of in the studio. Fantastic. Um, this is your missing void clue. So I've now got you back. 
All right, Doris, let's head over to you. Yeah, Doris has um, has a little table in her garage. And so she brought out uh, like a couple letter writing supplies, intending to sort of like sit with the breeze and write some letters. But then she got distracted by her garage, which is very organized, but she's decided it's not organized enough. So she's going to like take stock of all the different many different lengths and widths of rope that she has and just kind of make sure they're exactly where she wants. And then she kind of catches sight of her Bowie knife and is like, ah, well, that could be sharper. So then she's going to sharpen her Bowie knife. And then eventually, once the garage is back in order, go back to her letter writing materials, her stationery, and write a letter to her friend Ethel a few towns over. Fantastic. Um, as you're sort of serenaded to by the shirtless trombone player, because he is playing. Um, yes, it's a perfect day for Doris. Uh, and you can sort of see him through your window. You do see this mysterious person sort of stop by your, your front door and then walk away, but definitely perhaps deposited something on your front doorstep. Ooh, uh, Doris is going to kind of run down the sidewalk and sort of like go to yell to them, but I think they're probably either disappeared or they're too far away. So she's going to go investigate what's on the doorstep. Maybe, maybe absentmindedly still holding the giant Bowie knife. I love it. Um, yes. So on the doorstep, uh, you see this leather bound um, journal. And on the back, there's like a, a stamp, like the a leather stamp that's sort of engraved in there. And you recognize that it's um, it's this insignia of the community college bookstore, uh, Brenda Wood Bay Community College. And when you sort of flip to the title page, it looks like it's Homer Pearl's journal. Um, and if you will recall, there were lots of things um, that that his family talked about in terms of his oceanic obsession in the past, in the most recent of weeks. Um, and so these are are his words, as it were. And as you're standing on the doorstep, it's like the 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 camera pans away to your answering machine um, where you get um, a, a, a click and this voice kind of coming right over uh, the speaker. This voice sounds almost familiar this time, but not quite. Doris, it's me again. I need to do something for me at the theater tonight. Tell <laughs> that Helen knew the truth. Did you get that? Tell <laughs> That Helen knew the truth. Just did you deliver the word to the doctor yet? Oh no, I gotta go. Just don't forget to deliver. <laughs> Helen knew the truth. <laughs> Click. Oh, and the, Doris is gonna like replay that like three more times and try to see if she can hear what name, who she's supposed to tell, uh, and then kind of like jots jots it down, thinking about going to the theater with a mission. Awesome, baby. Let's go to you. What is your cozy activity? I'm on a back inverter. <laughs> if you know what that is, it's an, basically an ironing board that you just latch onto and it flips you upside down to help stress, to help release tension. So I'm doing that and listening to 60 Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, my relaxing activity. <laughs> is it on TV? I just need to know, is it on TV up on the other side so that you can't see it? Yeah. Yeah, but you're absolutely. Just, just listening to it. I'm, like my butt is straight facing sixty minutes. It, yeah, just, once you re just, once you revert, you will be able to watch it. But yep. <laughs> so I'm just listening. No mirror setup. I get it. No, I like it. None. <laughs> and obviously, there is soup that is just simmering on the stove. But we're stretching. I love that you're stretching. Um, and Chico kind of comes in, your neighbor's dog um, that you feed and pet. My and, boy! <laughs> and licks your face. Um, and uh, uh, where you're sort of like inverted, you can see the uh, your backyard. And since you have been unconscious for two days, it does occur to you that you maybe haven't seen Teddy in a bit. <laughs> maybe the last time you saw Teddy was the night that you all solved that murder. Yeah. Well, at least you had a good, like, two days of unconsciousness. Yeah. She would have liked to hear about it. Maybe that's why you're thinking about it. All right. Eddie Rue, to you. Well, Eddie Rue is in the parlor again. But this time she's, you know, she's pressing some flowers. She's been having a lot of trouble getting this peony just right. It's a very big bloom. So it's, you know, you want to get it so that when you press it, it still looks like a peony, even though it's become two-dimensional. She just can't for the life of her figure it out. As she uh, does this, um, she keeps seeing in the reflection, because she uses two p uh, panes of glass to get them pressed, she keeps seeing these sort of like dark shadows over her shoulder in the reflection. 
But when she turns, there's nothing there's nothing there. And it just seems to be only in the glass itself that is uh, pressing. So that's been a bit of a, a troubling thing. But otherwise, you know, she's just really trying. You know, she put on some Brahms today. And uh, has really, because you know, she, she had been doing rockabilly. And that was just getting her too too worked up for the, such delicate delicate uh, flowers as peonies. So she's trying Brahms. Uh, have you seen Etienne lately? We had a dalliance, but, you know, it lasted only an afternoon. Hmm. Uh, I think that you, uh, yeah, fantastic. And I think that he also has uh, let you know that he is, he's sort of fallen off the radar. So he keeps telling you that he's not around, even though like you're not necessarily asking for him. So he's just like, oh, I'm, just I'm so busy. I'm so busy with trying to reopen my bar. He just sort of like lets you know this from time to time as if you've been searching for him. I get these, I get these, uh, these answering machine messages sometimes. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fantastic. Um, so you all are meeting up at Cup of Nothing for for lunch, this late lunch uh, in the in the afternoon, and it's almost like we just sort of do this this um, uh, cut to the next scene. Um, you can kind of see in this cafe that is uh, half inside, half outside, that um, Esther uh, Darawimple. Uh, your nemesis, who uh, has started a, a rival book club, um, who used to be a member of your book club. She's having lunch with Frank Spitznagel, another nemesis, who was the person who took down Evil Home Depot, who, who was on Evil Home Depot's side, um, and is your neighbor, baby. Um, Chico is his dog. <laughs> Uh, so she's having lunch with him and a woman that you don't necessarily recognize, but you all are, are sitting there and, and having lunch. What do you do? I'm going to take a walk to the ladies room and knock her chair. <laughs> but obviously we have to play this off discreetly. So I'm just going to pretend I dropped my glasses and I couldn't see anything. Mm. It is really unfortunate that you're so blind, baby. So it's blind. a hard life, you know, and I haven't had my prescription updated in five years. So it's a little off. Excuse me. Uh, yes. So, um, Esther, uh, is, is just, is, is very shady with you and is just, um, uh, glaring, glaring at you and, 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 and saying, oh, she's just so blind. Just ignore her. She's just so blind, but is just continuing to have her conversation at the table with the, um, with these, uh, with Frank and, uh, this woman that you don't recognize. I feel like, I feel like I'm, I feel like we're sitting and having our conversations, you know, I'm probably having a, I don't know, a Cobb salad or something. And anticipating ordering an eclair, uh, but trying trying to like overhear. I feel like I don't know which which of the three of us is perhaps best situated, like to be overhearing or how close we are to this. But I imagine we're close enough that sort of like we could, if we wanted to get a little quiet, maybe perhaps overhear. Because I'm curious to know who this other person is. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. Um. So. They seem to really be talking about the um, the Twisted Twixters book club. That's really what they seem to be talking about. Um, just very, in fact, overly loud um, uh, next to you. Um, the the woman is not necessarily participating, but Frank and Esther are very loudly discussing this this book club and its success in the three weeks since it's been uh, since since they've started it. I see. And have and they what... actually read the books this time? I'm gonna walk back from the bathroom and. Just casually mention to Frank, I didn't know you could read. <laughs> <laughs> and and Frank, again, is just like immediately like looks at you like just in, you have interrupted us again. And is just like, mm, mm hmm. Nice to see you, too, baby. I feel like the book has got to be like they've just been talking about the very first book in the series because Esther's the only one who has any experience, like everybody else is brand new. And by everyone else, I imagine Frank is in this, but I don't know who, like maybe it's just the two of them, <laughs> right? Like the great success is that like they keep, they keep inviting people who don't come back. <laughs> like they've, they've technically had larger gatherings than us, but the only returnee is Frank. Um, <laughs> And they can't get through the first book because they have to keep starting over for all the new people. <laughs> yes. I, I think, think that's very clear. Yeah, go ahead, Doris. Yes. Oh, I was just going to say, I think Doris, like, overhearing the talk of the new book club is going to kind of, like, raise her eyebrows at Eddie Rue and Lane. And if they're both like, 
looking at her, then she's just going to start talking loudly about our book club, like even louder than they're talking about their book club. And she's going to be like, well, you know, at our last meeting of the murder, murder mavens, I could not believe that twist. What did you think about it, Lane? Well, I thought it was weird that there was a real murder in town that happened and that made the meeting not. Oh, well, that was a couple of meetings ago. But I get, you know, time blurs together, you know. I didn't see it coming. I'll be honest with you. Usually I see them coming. I didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. And you know who writes the most predictable things that you always see coming? That author of that, the thriller. What is that thriller series called? You know, Esther, you know the one. What's the author of that? Uh, Yeah, Esther, didn't you read those thrillers? Those predictable thrillers? You did read them, didn't you? Esther is doing this because you're talking about twists. La 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 um in her ears and so she can't she can't hear you and Frank is just like he's got his head in his hands and you notice that the woman actually isn't participating in this at all. Um in fact she's just like uh she's like uh just sort of like tapping on on the table a little bit, just like very nervously. Is she is she sort of like of of age with us or is she like do we you know She looks like she's in her forties actually. She's younger and she's wearing a very, very dark suit. Um, Poor Esther. Looks like she's lost her hearing. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna go over. I, I just want to. I just want to lean over and say, uh, since we're all basically at the, ta- at the at the same table at this point. Hi, I'm Eddie Rue. What's your name? And uh, and the and the woman sort of looks at you with with very very big eyes, and you can see that she's also like aggressively chewing gum. And she's just like, oh, um, uh, hi, I, I'm, 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 I'm Jenna McAllister. Um, I, I'm, I'm the new district attorney in town. Oh my goodness! It's so nice to meet you. I'm Eddie Rue. These are my friends. I imagine Esther and Frank have told you all about us at this point. I'm Lane Walter. Don't sue me. <laughs> Doris Makoviak. So nice to meet you, Jenna. I'm Baby Garcia. Don't let the name fool you. I'm actually 82. Uh- Oh, 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 yes. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I actually have, I've, have heard of you and Esther just sort of like shoots her a look and she's just like, sure. I, it, it, they have a right to know. So, um, uh, so, well, here's, here's, uh, uh, oh, shit, been, are we under arrest? I, I've been brought into town because, and then Esther just can't hold, get a hold of herself. She's like, oh, because you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Oh, how exciting for you, Esther. What did we do? <laughs> You fucked up the case. Uh, they didn't fuck up the case. They didn't. Uh, th- that's not the language that I would use at all. That is not the language I would use at all. Um, I'm, I, um, I, I'm, I'm waiting with with Esther to meet with with the sheriff because there was some evidence that was mishandled from the case that you all solved. I guess um, question marks. Uh, but, but we can't really prosecute at the, the at this time with those because of of, of the mishandled evidence. Um, Anyway, uh, I was going to come talk to you about this uh, at my uh, at, at my own on my own timeline. And I just I just couldn't get um, uh, Will you excuse me? And she immediately like, walks outside and around the corner. And you can see that she's pulling out a pack of cigarettes um, uh, as she walks and is like spitting the gum that she was chewing aggressively, like onto the uh, onto the street. Lane. Lane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not smoking any Marlboros. Let me tell you that. Lane. Uh, Lane sighs and says. You know, a night in jail would actually solve a different problem I'm having, but all right. <laughs> Thank you for your service. And she follows. <laughs> You're very brave. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, yeah, so you go outside and around the corner, and there she is, just sort of chain smoking um, and looking very, very distraught um, as you as you come up. Uh, yes, Lane. Uh, Lane just puts her hand up to uh, to have a drag. And Jenna looks at her cigarette and looks and, and just like offers you a full one. Uh, yeah, Lane Lane lights it and uh, just just takes a smoke, sort of you know that thirty seconds of smoking silence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how can we make this go away for you and for us? Uh, um. Well, uh, this isn't how I wanted to have this conversation happening, um, but the sheriff wanted me to, to entertain his mother while he did. This town is so weird. Um, so uh, I'll, I was going to have you all come to my office at some point later, later, but like not today. Like I, I still have to like look at what happened and, and sort of figure out why this there's an issue at all, except that like, look, the, 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 the conviction is not going to stick more than likely. And that's the whole thing. That's the problem, right? The conviction's got to stick and the conviction hasn't stuck and, and that's it's just not going to stick. It's just not going to stick. Well, we found a lot of other evidence. Oh, did you give it to the sheriff? 
Well, I, we sort of talked about it in a whole monologue uh, <laughs> where we laid it all out. The sheriff was there. Right, right. Well, maybe, uh, hopefully he has it all then. I mean, I just, I just don't know. I just really hope that we can work around this. I, I would hate for you all to be into trouble. You all seem like very nice um, uh, elderly, I mean, um, uh, the, uh, older, I mean, um, you seem like, you were all remind me and she's no, like no, pulling please, out. No, no, please keep doing words like that. <laughs> She's like, she's like pulling out another cigarette and like changing. She's like, you all just remind me so much of my grandmother. And I just, I just, I'm just trying really hard to. I don't know job. if I'm old enough to be your grandmother lady. Um, yes, I didn't mean, obviously, obviously I didn't mean. Um, anyway. Uh, I didn't have a kid at 10. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, um, it was lovely chatting with you. I'm just going to continue to walk around this corner, um, and be alone with my thoughts for, for, for a moment. If you need the evidence, we took notes. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. I will, I will have a meeting properly in my office with you at some other point in time. Not today. That was Esther's fault. That was not my fault. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, Lane goes back to the table. Ladies, we're under arrest eventually. The, the sheriff didn't take any of the other notes that we took. And apparently he only had one piece of evidence. That's so strange. Idiot. I feel like I feel like we gave him so much. Esther, didn't we give your son so much evidence? If my son says you didn't give him all the evidence, then you didn't give him all the evidence. Oh. I think her son's hearing is going too. L- Lane, I guess you're going to have to figure it out in your next rendezvous with the sheriff. Uh, Lane just sips coffee. <laughs> Ladies, why don't we do something nice? Because I feel like maybe we started off with the wrong foot with our new friend. Not you. Instead of going to the office, why don't we invite her to a nice little lunch? Maybe some afternoon tea. That's a lovely idea. I've got the part. We could do it in my parlor. I think that's lovely. Okay. That's okay. Okay. We could. Yes. Oh. Oh. This is exciting. Just some high tea. Just some afternoon tea. Sorry. Afternoon tea. (laughs) Where are my manners? (laughs) Well, all right. We'll, 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 you know, let her know. Fantastic. Um, Are you planning on trying to invite her right this second? No, I think she needs to cool down for a little bit. Yeah. Doris, maybe you could write her a letter. Oh, gladly. You know, I just got some new stationery the other day. I think it will be, I think it will set the tone quite nicely. Should we say Friday? A clean. Friday works for me. Friday's perfect. I'm retired. I don't have any plans. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, good. You can help me clean. (laughs) Less time in my house, the better. (laughs) Lovely. Fantastic. Um, writing down Friday, high tea with Jenna McAllister. There will be an invite from Doris. Love it. By the way, this eclair is delicious. (laughs) Reminds me of my time in the Pyrenees. (laughs) Why not? Etienne walks by right as you're saying this. (laughs) Etienne walks by like the window outside. Yeah. Yeah. Just walks by. Yeah. Rubberneck, full rubberneck. Everybody looks but, but Eddie Rue, who's just (laughs) putting, who's just sort of like, just sort of like enjoying the cream. <laughs> oh, what's going on? Yes, he's quite, he looks quite amazing today in a different fisherman sweater. You can smell the vanilla from here. We were just getting a pair of these. Oh, that was good, baby. Thank you. Okay, fine. And Eddie Rue pushes off, pushes off and just sort of like, I don't know how long I'll be. Should I leave some cash? <laughs> I'll leave some cash. And I dropped down some cash, and I don't know, it was 1997, so $10. Uh, How much could a banana cost, Michael? $10? Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, she puts down $10 and says, I don't know, baby, did you get my change? And I'm just going to go off and um, and follow, because I'm sure she'll get, it'll be changed for $10, because it's 1997. <laughs> we had a full lunch and an eclair. This is a sweet green. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I'll follow off Etienne and be like, Etienne, hello. Uh, you can kind of notice that he was walking very, very slowly by cup of nothing. So like it was a very slow, slow walk that was happening as as he and so he he immediately when you do stop, he's like, oh, and hi, hi, Eddie Rue. So lovely. So lovely to see you. So lovely to see you as well. I'm so sorry I haven't gotten back to you, but I hear you're very busy. That's exciting. I have I have been very, very busy with the bar. Um, you know, we, we finally got the funding through. And so we are planning a big oh. reopening, oh. Um, which is very, very exciting, obviously. Well, I, I hope that you'll invite me and the rest of the Mavens, of course. 
Uh, of course, of course. I, I wouldn't be a party with without. It wouldn't be a party without uh, without you. You flatter me. Mm. I'm mm-hmm. sort of like do that little thingy on, the, on with my finger on his chest. Sort of like, mm. well, I, I I assume that everything is well uh, with you know the fish tacos. Oh uh, yes, uh, yes. Fish tacos is doing quite well. Quite good, well. Good, 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 good. good yes, good, good. I, I love a fish taco. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. I um, imagine you do. I do indeed. Anyway, well, listen, it's lovely to see you. I'm just wondering if you had, I mean, you were walking, you were walking ever so slowly. You reminded me of a Steve Martin bit I saw recently. Oh, um, was I walking slowly? Um, well, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. I just suppose it was, I wasn't sure if you were hoping to have a conversation or anything or. Oh, um, well, I mean, who, who, I mean. Um, oh, do I have you flustered how the tables have turned? I'm not easily flustered, Eddie Rue. I'm not easily flustered at all. Um, I just, I was, a, a, it had been a minute since I had seen you that that was all. Sure. Well, you've seen me. I have it's seen to be you. Seen. Yes, yes, yes. Um, in fact, I, I was thinking about you, as it turns out, and he, um, from his jacket pocket, he pulls out um, uh, uh, a peony and... Um, and he and he hands it to you, and it's this like beautiful corally color. And he's just, says, I, I was thinking of you, Eddie Rue. Um, I was maybe walking a little slowly in hopes of giving this to you. Well, I'm flattered. I accept. I'll see you at eight. No, I'm busy. I'm seeing a show. I'll call oh, you. Oh, you're seeing the show. Oh yes. Are you seeing the show? No, I've just heard. I mean, I've just heard things. You know. About the show. Oh, well, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, I, it was, it's an invite only. So we're on the inside of it and we're, you know, we're, we're there to be a supportive audience, but I'm happy to hear any scuttlebutt on the way in. Just to sort of like, Lane is very particular, you know, and we, and it's best when we let her know ahead of time if there's going to be any sort of like mm, issues that she may come up with the production just so she's prepared and she doesn't um, storm out of the theater in the middle of the show. So anything, anything at all, I'm happy, you know, more information is better. Well, I, I know that Mabel took it in a whole different direction than, than Jones was, and they've lost like half the cast, I think. Oh my goodness. So there's a lot of um, creative choices that are going to be made, to my understanding. I do so hope we get a doubling situation. Oh, I think there's tripling, my dear <gasps> Eddie Rue. Oh my goodness, Ophelia as the, as her own father. This is what we need. <laughs> uh, I do love your spirit. Uh, well, my spirit does move. Um, can I? I feel like I want to do some sort of day move here. Great. To sort of get some information. Yeah. What are you doing? That's risky, or um... I don't know. I guess that's not real. I don't know what risk I have with this person beyond. Um... <laughs> <laughs> venereal disease um <laughs> i don't know i don't know if there's anything appropriate i think i'm just glad to have information yeah i mean this is yeah these aren't clues at all these are just like some some setting some stuff but yeah yeah i love it yeah well what i'll do is this i'll I take mean, it's the sort of a clue to a lower stakes mystery than a murder <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true i think i think maybe it, maybe i will just sort of like i will sort of like lightly you know touch his arm and say well, Etienne, always a pleasure. I want you to know your eclairs are better, but these are very good. Keep up the baking, and I will see you perhaps later this week. I'll yeah. give you a call. Uh, excellent. And and he and he uh, he actually like because you've been like touching his chest. He like, actually takes your hand and he like he cups your hand with his hand and he's just like it has been a pleasure. And he stares deep into your eyes. I hope it mm. happens again soon. Kisses, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I go back and I share the information with um with the group. Well, now we got to see this play. <laughs> well, we're going. I mean, we're going. I'm just making sure that you're aware. Uh, this is as good a time as any to tell you that um, some things that you do know already about the production is that it's based on a movie that came out about a year ago. That it's sort of a, a concept production um, of Hamlet that is based off of a movie that I'm not sure any of you saw called Scream. And... Um, there's definitely some like 
overlaps there in terms of the marketing. They've got some horror shots with like this creepy ghost face thing happening and like some knives. It's it's all very I'm not sure which of you saw this movie, if any of you saw Scream. Um, but you Hamlet's do know. Hamlet's ghost in a scream mask? <laughs> Maybe. Why did I just think it was going to be the Lion King? Because that made the most sense. And it's like, is it like a, is it, so is it fuzzy funny. furry Hamlet? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's Julie Taymor's Hamlet. <laughs> uh, and the, uh, other thing that you know from uh, what has been going on is that Mabel Mabel took it over from her mother, and uh, not only has has she taken over um, the space, but she's also like rebranding it. So it was just called the Brindlewood Bay Community Players for years, um, and now she is rebranding it as something called the BWB Bravados or the Brindlewood Bay bravados um in a in an attempt that you all sort of assume has to do with like trying to make this more approachable for um younger audiences it sounds like an acapella group <laughs> that's straight What's out that? of perfect <laughs> a barbershop quartet oh oh the colonel was in one of those uh, uh please tell me that he at least wore the pinstripes that's what sealed the deal. I know it is. It's okay. <laughs> what's barbershop? What what's what's barbershop without pinstripes? Soon they'll be making mouth sounds from drums. <laughs> I, I also I really appreciate that like 1997 is like peak rock acapella. Do you remember rock acapella? Yes. <laughs> like we're talking about like where in the world is Carmen San Diego right now? And everyone's like, my mind is all the children are like, my mind is blown. Like, the music. <laughs> It's that TikTok audio. What is that melody? I love it. You mean to tell me that they made beatboxing white? (laughs) (laughs) To be fair, Rockapella didn't have a beatboxer. I don't don't ask me why I know this much about acapella music. You know way more than I do. I'm I'm just sort of sitting here in awe. Um so um That's before, what I was going for me. <laughs> <laughs> before we cut over to the theater, um, I am curious which one of you uh so I, I think more many of you can answer this if you so choose, but uh the Brendlewood Bay community players is connected to one of your favorite memories. So if any of you feels particularly strongly that it's you and there can be more than one, um, you can let me know. But the Brendlewood Bay community players is con- connected to one of your favorite memories. What is it? A uh, question before going into that. Our sweet darling lady we hate so much. Darling Esther. Esther. Was she, has she ever performed in any of these shows? Oh, I'm sure she has. Um, I'm sure she hasn't been a lead, but I think she has. She's only played silent roles, and I love that for her. So I go to every show she's in. One show I had to be. I didn't even get to be a tree. I had to be the ground. <laughs> <laughs> You guys know that 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 is a deep cut Jennifer Coolidge joke reference, but okay, a deleted scene from a deleted scene from a series of unfortunate events with Jim Carrey is is just... that line tasted like in a chocolate eclair. That was perfect. They put they put a rug on me, and then they forgot I was there, and I just slept underneath the rug that night in the theater. <laughs> you get to be a pr- You get to get married. <laughs> They can probably only put her in starting in like dress rehearsals because she reads the script slower than everyone else. And if this <laughs> gets spoiled too early on. <laughs> yeah. Esther is not good at things. Yes. But she is the mother of the sheriff. So she's got that going for it. Crotch goblins can only get you so far. <laughs> it's like the that when they did the music, man, she was like the fourth pick a little talk a little lady. <laughs> she was she was like a part of the one Grecian urn scene, but she was just like doing a hand motion. <laughs> she took it too literally. T- pick a little, talk a little. She just didn't. When they did arsenic and old lace, she was the lace. <laughs> <laughs> so, was one of your favorite memories, or maybe was all of your favorite memories, going there to like watch her like fuck up a performance, like when she was actually given a speaking role or something? I think that was the moment we knew we had to ask her to leave the group. Um, it was also, who was it? I thought one of us carried lozenges around last episode. Maybe that, 
no, maybe that's just me in my head, but I imagine that we would bring just like butterscotch candies, the loud crinkly wrapper and just open it as soon as she opens her mouth. This is very much a baby thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By one of us, you mean definitely you? <laughs> Okay, fine. Y'all are nice or whatever. I think, okay, I, I can go with something. I feel like this is the sort of thing where, like, when the Colonel, Colonel and I first visited Brindlewood Bay community uh, uh, years and years and years ago, we went to a lovely little performance of Fiddler on the Roof there, which was sort of like, a, it was very charming, and they uh, they served latkes at the end of it, and I, th- and I was, you know, delighted at the sort of, like, cosmopolitan sort of... Just how cosmopolitan this this <laughs> this New England town was to even know what a latka is. They did just learn what bagels are. I this this is the era of what's a bagel. That's true. That's true. They're they're like finally getting out of lenders. It's also the era where people started toasting bagels, and I'm still upset about it. <laughs> it's okay to toast them if they're if they got cold. It's okay to yes, it's okay to toast a bagel if it's become inferior in some way. It's a great way to save a bagel. Fantastic. So we have Fiddler on the Roof. Um, uh, when, but this is before you moved, right? Yeah, I would say this was before we moved. And I mean, like, depending on how long, I like the idea of it having been like 20 years ago or something. Or maybe like the sheriff played like, he played the part I played when I was in ninth grade. He played Mendel, the rabbi's son. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and his line was, a radical. <laughs> so Wyman Darawimple played Mendel the Rabbi's son in this production 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Fantastic. Anybody else have a memory from the the theater that you want to that that you think uh you have for this? I have one. I think that like pretty shortly after, like let's say nine or ten months after um, Doris's husband Dale died she was feeling pretty low and the community theater production of Cats um, had a (laughs) had uh, the set designer like just totally like drop out and they were really panicking and they needed someone to like put some stuff up and kind of be handy and um someone from the theater asked Doris and she got to like work on the set and like use her really hands-on skills. And it felt nice to be part of the community at a time when she was feeling sad for her husband's loss. Great. Lane, how often do you go to the theater? Just out of curiosity. I think Lane goes, goes to everything and takes notes and then does not deliver the notes to the people who could benefit from them. I don't know if her notes would necessarily be helpful to them, but she takes copious, like, pages of notes. Have there been, I, I feel like I need to know if there have been, like, industrious young people who are, like, from the community who, like, try to seek you out at any point to try and get a note? Yes! You know, I probably happened once. And then never again. <laughs> because of how poorly it went? <laughs> yes. <laughs> how brutal the, the, the feedback was? I love it. Yes. <laughs> um, well, you know, this this young actor was like, what, who's who's Constantine Stanislavski? <laughs> uh, I love that. That's amazing. Meisner, I hardly even met her. Uda? Uda who? Uda Hagen? Who? Ha? Huh? We don't even know what a bagel is. Um, so the other thing I'll just like flag uh, here, Lane, that you do know, whether or not like you know him well is beside the point. But Jones Galois, the man that you saw this morning with the missing eye, you know, directs almost every single production that you have ever seen at at the Brendlewood Bay Community Players. Um, but you know that his name has been removed from this um, this production. So it is now Mabel's show. Interesting. OK, OK. So you arrive at the Brindlewood Bay Community Players or the BWB Bravados um, and uh, for this compelling uptake of Hamlet set in the recently released horror movie Scream to get to the young kids. Mabel is getting everything sort of set up um, uh, in as you sort of enter the theater, like nobody is there to greet you in the lobby. But you see a number of photos um, in this lobby uh, of, of different cast members. 
you see um, stalwarts of the theater, including um, Patricia, Patrice Yellen, who is playing Gertrude, among many others. And she is like the stalwart, like that community actress that's like in everything and is actually really damn good, but has never like done anything outside of community theater. She's in this play um, and she's and then you also see that um, they're uh, the person who gets cast in everything. Um, Killigan Ernst, who is in his 60s. Um, is playing Hamlet. Yeah, he's got his 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 photo up there. Um, and something else that you notice is a new face on the wall, um, Wendy Wales, who is playing Ophelia, and she's in her 20s. Those are just some big, like, flag out things that, that stand out to you. But as you're sort of standing in this lobby waiting for um, Mabel to come greet you, I'm curious, um, what obnoxious slash out of touch things did Mabel put in the lobby to youth it up? I'm trying to think of stuff from the movie Scream besides the mask. I feel like there should be like the mask is like a photo booth op. Since we didn't have digital pictures, you have to do the real thing. With like um, disposable cameras just sort of like yeah, sitting yeah, near yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, from the ceiling there is uh, like hanging like on a fishing line, um, a, like ro- a, a, like sadly rotating and like kind of destroyed copy of the novelization of Scream. <laughs> oh, I feel like there's like a cast photo that they've put put up, but they're all wearing like like Jenko jeans. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like they're all wearing they're all wearing like trendy like semi like semi God, forgive me, urban seeming. <laughs> seeming clothing but there's like a 60 year old man and like a 20 year old girl like <laughs> like doing like you know like those awful like couple sh- shoots <laughs> backwards baseball caps yeah oh my god and everybody who comes in like with their program or their ticket they get a Brindlewood Bay Bravado's branded slap bracelet yes <laughs> oh, oh hell god. yeah Fuck yeah, that's cool. I want to say this is slightly, um, we think it's the decoration, but it's also just they haven't refurbished their lobby lighting. There's just one light bulb that's giving that like Five Nights at Freddy's kind of flash on and off. And people are like, ooh, the ambiance. And it's like, no, we're just not doing maintenance. Can we also just commit really quickly to like what the architecture of this building is? And just that like, I imagine it's, I'm thinking about like the community theater in like Nantucket, right? Which is like, gotta be like there's like a lawn in front of this building do you know what i mean and there's like it's like it's like a two it's it's an old house that's been converted into a theater mm. you know like one of those situations where you're like i feel like i'm standing in someone's foyer yeah like it's not lobby. made for large groups it's made for like a family size space yeah and like they could they they blasted out a couple of walls to make it or like i don't maybe it's an old church or something i don't know mm. you know yeah that's that's fun that's an old like white clapboard church um with like you know uh with like a lawn out front oh i love that so much um if it's an old church too that means there's lots of little rooms which is excellent uh so what you can hear as you have come into this space um this like is is uh the sounds of tech um not going well so behind this curtain in this lobby as you're sort of like looking at all of the pictures on the wall um you see like a specifically like a blank a blank wall that looks like there was something there but it is no longer but then you see the curtains and the the curtains that are pro- like partitioning you away from the theater itself and from the other side of the curtain you're just hearing like screams and yelling and anger um you're you're just like no no you hang the light this way oh my god we we're so behind schedule the audience is going to be here not it's only those like five biddies like what do you care about it's not well it's four of them and also like you know we don't know where teddy is um so like just calm your side and like they're just like screaming back and forth and screaming back and forth about how they're behind schedule and it's all just happening very very quickly i want to point out so it is so that was a question so it's just it's just the five of us and one of us is so teddy is still missing has anybody seen teddy i don't know i don't think so i guess still today how long has it been it's been two days since we've talked to teddy it's uh been since the mystery since the murder so weeks mm-hmm Oh, well, Eddie Rue absolutely would have would have like figured. I mean, she's too much of a busybody not to have tried to investigate that. I don't know if that's too retconny. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you've gone back to it because, yeah, she's not in her home. So if you did investigate it, she's gone. OK, like gone as in like not present. Not gone as in like a for sale sign outside. There's no for sale sign, but she didn't say that she was leaving. No lights on. Mm-hmm. So that's con- that's interesting. And I mean, not too concerning because she's a little flighty, but also. I think I might I might I might ask Doris for the spare. I might be, try to get Doris to get the spare key and maybe we can go over there together. Yeah. Why don't we do it after the show? Sure. Yes, that's a good idea. A question about like while we are in this lobby um, waiting for the show, do we see Joan Scalwa anywhere? Um, no, um, but you do see that his picture is still up in the lobby um, and it says uh, consultant. It used to say director, but they have like br- like put a, a little piece of paper over director and now it says consultant. And he's got both eyes. He has both eyes in that picture. Yeah, he looks amazing. Um, Lane dwells on it for a little a little too long, just like <laughs> making sure he has both eyes. Yeah, he has both eyes. It looks like it. Uh, anybody else uh, want to do anything in the lobby? I just want to pull aside the curtain and take a peek at what they're doing. Oh, good. Because right as you do, you're like, like smacked face in the, in the, like right headlong into Mabel, who's like coming through. Oh my God. Oh, hi. Hi. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, uh, yeah, we are, we are behind schedule, but we are almost ready for all of you, you know, life at the theater. It's just so, so great. So great. Um, uh, uh, we don't have, oh, we do, we do. We have plenty of wine, wine and, and beer over there. Just help yourself in the, in the little concessions area. Um, uh, uh, we, we will hopefully get going here in, 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 in just a second. And you can sort of see through the curtain behind baby that like there's still a ladder like and and you see somebody at the top of the ladder like doing something with lights um uh and doing all of that and you can sort of see that there's some bustle happening there as well just some pre-show jitters dear no 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 no. just fine we're doing just fine we're just doing it's gonna be great it's gonna be great mom would be very happy i think i'm i i hope i i'm not sure maybe i think yes i think eddie rue would be looking for any helen was her name Mm -hmm. her mother's name i think i'll be looking for any sort of like in memoriam sort of things that maybe have been put up or anything like that and also perhaps uh perhaps leafing through the program and by the leafing through i imagine it's like two it's like a a piece of eight and a half eleven paper folded in half with you know a couple of them with like staples in the middle (laughs) or something and you see like hand it's been crossed out like different names of different people and like it's bit like like it's still it's still in process and and that's sort of what what maybe mabel is saying saying, it's still in process because we're doing some creative things with casting here and and it's just but but here's a program here's a program for you um just uh, ignore um these these four names um and uh oh um oh yeah and we lost We lost George. Okay. Um, So, yeah. So, but yeah, it's a work in progress. I'm going to have them new ones printed out by the time we open. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Um, And you do see that there's like a work in progress uh, picture of of Helen slash like like something that they're going to put up on the wall. Um, But it's not leaning against the empty wall. It's leaning against a different wall. Mm, Okay. Um, And what's the what's Wendy's bio? (laughs) Um. Oh my God, I'm so excited for my first show. That kind of time. Um, she is a student. Uh, it's like that kind of vibe for sure. Uh, and uh, she she says that she's a student studying oceanography at Brindlewood Bay Community College. Well, she certainly chose the right location for her studies. You're famously, the ocean isn't anywhere else. <laughs> uh, Doris, Doris is going to go up to Mabel and say, Mabel, you're working so hard and your mom, your mom would have been so proud. And I just want to tell you, like, you got this and Helen knew the truth. You know, it's going to be fine. What? Yeah. Knew the truth about what? I, I don't know. You know, right? I'm just, I'm just sending you good vibes. Just good vibes. It's going to be, I'm excited to see it. Oh, um, uh, okay. Um, knew the truth about what? Did she say something to you before she died? No, no. Not nothing specific. I can see. I don't. Not that I remember. Were you close? No. I mean, huh. we chatted, you know, at at the at the grocery store and things like that. But yeah, she would have been proud right. of you. You know. Yes. Th- th- thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um. 
So um, if you all uh, will just follow me this way, um, we'll, we'll hopefully get started soon. If, if, I, if you all like maybe set up a presence in the theater, then maybe that will motivate some people to, to move faster. And on some people, you hear like a shout come from down, like from the ladder being like, I am going as fast as I can, Mabel. And it is uh, a 60 year old Ginger Hale, Doris, who you know, um, because she's been working at the theater for years as the light tech. Um, and she is up on that ladder still at 60. Um, basically pasting the lights back together with chewing gum. Ginger, how's it going? I mean, I, I mean, I guess that's an obvious question, but you're doing you're doing great. And she just sort of winks at you and she's like, better now that you're here, love. Ah, Ginger. Yeah, she is a huge dyke. She's got beautiful red hair that is like all messy and she's got the hugest fucking keychain um alive imaginable plus like her wrench tied to her belt um and she is ratcheting those lights but she is just sort of watching you doris and she's like doris why did you never work here again huh and mabel just like shouts up at ginger being like hey can you please focus we have to start on time soon no no, no i'm just talking to doris i'm just talking to doris doris why don't you ever come and build sets with me huh huh we could build some more sets we, we built some very nice sets oh, we we did, you know, that 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 cat's show was that was remarkable. I've never seen so many humans acting like cats on something I had built. That was impressive. Um yeah, I don't I don't know. It's just been, you know, life gets away from you, but what's what's the next one? You need help on the next one? I can clear my calendar. Oh, oh really? Uh, yeah, I would love to um to to have your help specifically um whenever you want to give it. I think that would be that would be delightful. I, I, I'd like that. I like that, Ginger. Yeah, let's do it. While this is happening, I think I would like to imagine that Lane, Baby, and Eddie Rue are all over by the bar, and we've just been pouring wine and are just noticing that we've been overflowing a cup <laughs> with wine while watching this. We go, oh, oh, oh. Um, and then I also would like to point, just would like to point out that the fruitcake that Eddie Rue gave to Mabel weeks ago is here and untouched but as but is like available to be cut up and served to people um and uh and one of the things that any reprises or surprises herself on with her fruitcake is how durable it is and how much it can last a couple of weeks <laughs> without losing its flavor i love that the most admirable thing about her fruitcake is its durability i think that's like a great word for fruitcake um, they have to be able to survive the mail it's true <laughs> It's true. Doris, I would like to know about these sets that you've been making. Um, this this person seems like they're very good at what they do, and um, they seem lovely. I would like to hear about these sets in a in a later time. But for now, wine. Just want, I just want I just want Eddie Rue and Lane to be doing like to be like holding up the overflowed glasses just to their lips, just to like try and like lower the. Just Lane to try and sort of leans to Eddie Rue and says. They're looking at that keychain, there's no way there's that many doors in town, right? <laughs> oh no, those are those are those are definitely heirlooms. <laughs> Perhaps trophies even. Yeah. Ginger, uh, I think many of you would know, has a reputation. Maybe Doris doesn't know. Who knows? Ginger has a reputation in town for hitting on any any woman that moves in her direction. So she has clocked all of you and is just very happy that you're all here um, and has like just sort of focused on Doris because she knows Doris the best, but is like, oh, 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 yeah, great. Love Maven's Night. This is going to be great. Um uh, some other people that you're clocking um, as you come in, uh, you see close to the front, there is a 30 uh, ish something um, uh, woman who's like like crouching over her notes. Um, Lane, you clock J uh, Jones Galois um, in the front, uh, or uh, like not in the front, like closer to the back with his head in his hands, just like um, rubbing his temples. Uh, and then you do see a stage manager, presumably a stage manager at a table who is uh, in his 20s and has like frosted tips because it is the era of frosted tips. And I love me some frosted tips. Mm, I know. Uh, and he's screaming about safety. Everybody's got to be safe um, because he is especially mad at Ginger for leaning over to talk to Doris in a very unsafe manner. And Ginger sort of shouts back at him. I've been doing this longer than you've been alive. I'm fine. My balance has never been in question. <laughs> Isn't that right, Doris? It's never been in question. Never, My balance is Never, great. Ginger. Great. Never. Great. Great. Um, 
And then you also see, I mean, you see a number of people. There's like a bunch of people rucking around. But anybody in particular from those descriptions do you want to uh, chat with? I mean, you've given me a great gift in a 20-year-old frosted tip state manager. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh. I couldn't possibly I couldn't possibly let it go by. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he's dishy because um, they're all dishy because they're my they're my NPCs and I love making hot NPCs. So he is he is twenties frosted tips, very much looking like a young Joshua Jackson in Dawson's Creek in the frosted oh my tips God. era. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, sure. I know my audience. He's he's gorgeous. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talk to me more about those quaint New England towns. Can you get menopause a second time because I am having a major hot flash. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Eddie Rue. I think Eddie Rue sort of like um, sidles up to the sort of like tech table, which is of course just like a door situated on top of on top of the chairs on the on the stage, uh, the, the in the audience rather, um, and just leans down and says, "Is there anything I can do to help?" I'm Eddie Rue, by the way. Oh, um, uh, uh, not, not, not a present. Um, just, just uh, watch your head because G- Ginger, would you please stop? And and Ginger is just like, would you quiet down? I've been doing this for a very long time. I'm very good with my hands. Um, would you please? Uh, uh, mm. and they're just like having this back and forth. I just like to, I just like to sort of like place my, uh, to sort of like place my hand on his shoulder, very platonically, and just sort of to be like. I t- totally understand. This certainly isn't our first time in the theater, uh, so we're, we're welcome. And if I could just uh, lend a little bit of, um, if I may be so bold, a little bit of wisdom in my age, perhaps it's a good time to take a breath, you know, a couple of in, ins and outs to allow these moments, because it doesn't seem like Ginger is listening to what you have to say. It's all about communication, you know. Like, would you do it with me? Would you do, would you do a breath with me? Just, just take a moment. Just take a moment, I promise. Um... Uh, uh, sure. Um, just one more. Just, just with me. Just, just follow, follow, follow me. Ready? Uh, mm, mm. Oh, yeah, that wheeze. Mm. I see. I hear it. Yeah, no, I hear it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I see. You got to um, make sure you get it all out. Yes, uh, that, that, that was very, that was really, 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 um. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Eddie Rue laughing. This is this is Chris not being able to hold it together. <laughs> uh, well, well. This, how, how do you feel? Do you feel a little bit better? What's your name again? Oh, um, uh, oh yes. The breathing was very helpful. Um, I'm Numo. I'm Numo. I'm Numo. That's who I. Am. <sighs> and he's like recentering, and he's like, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Numo. <laughs> Numo, I have a pulmonologist. I could just, you know, it's a really good pulmonologist. We went on a few dates a couple of years back. He owes me. If you want, I can get you. A, I can get you an appointment post haste. Um, but uh, I love that name. Is it Greek? Um, uh, no, it's, uh, it was given to me, um, it was given to me by, um, by, uh, the, my, uh, my friends, um, because of, I don't know, we don't live near the ocean, doesn't Numo a sailor? I don't know. Anyway. Sure, uh, <laughs> sure, sure. Nemo, yes, Captain. Um, no, no, Numo, n- Numo. My name's oh. Numo. No, I, okay. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure, sure you are, honey. I'm gonna <laughs> give him just a sip of my wine. I assume you're of age. I know he's not. <laughs> And he's like, um, mm, mm, safety There's regulations one. prevent me from from accepting such a such a gift as that. Certainly, um, certainly, certainly. Okay, okay, everybody, I don't we're going to show applies to community theater. <laughs> That's for me, though. <laughs> and so he he sort of screams out, and he's still having this really hard time breathing. Um, and like, <laughs> I didn't know you could have frosted tips and be a square, but. Uh, he's uh yeah he's 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 got some issues um but he screams out okay guys we're gonna try to do this in 10 all right so 10 minutes to places please somebody tell wendy please and then he's like okay ginger okay we're gonna communicate now communicate um thank you we're gonna communicate would you please just make sure that is secure and she just sort of looks at him she's like what do you think i'm doing up here and then she looks, oh, oh, hi, Doris, because she sees that that your foot is is just like on her ladder. And she's just like, you just 
You have such nice ankles. You're just footing the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> this is so if anybody I don't know that anybody that listens to this podcast isn't a theater person but if they are not they are lost <laughs> uh, oh thank thank you thank you Ginger I I just thought I thought I'd put him to good use you know maybe stress out that that guy over there a little bit tiny bit less I don't know he looks pretty stressed as a human but He's unbelievably stressed, I swear to God. And I know he's getting laid, so I don't know what's his problem. Obviously not well enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so Numo is now trying to breathe as he's going around giving time calls to everybody. You also notice, um, so you've got Jones, you've got Mabel in the theater as well. Mabel, who is like running around with a, ch- like a chicken with her head cut off um, from group to group to group. Um, and Jones, again, just sitting in the back with his head in his hands, rubbing his temples. Um, you also see this uh, older gentleman um, who appears to be maybe even older than you all. Um, but you do recognize him uh, as the owner of the uh, antique shop in town called Boutique Antics. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have a good time. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and he's, uh, he's, he's just sort of sitting there, just looks very full of himself. He's just very happy to be there. He's just like... He's he's just like loves the chaos is what it looks like he's enjoying um, like somebody who's never sat in a tech before that kind of vibe. Um, if is Jones free? Oh yeah, Jones is just yep. He's just he's he's by himself. He's just like sitting there with his head Lane in his hands. Lane is going to as sneakily as possible for her. So I assume not sneaky at all. Um, try to sort of just like like scope him out and just like make sure that he is alive. Because, you know, she saw a, she saw him dead this morning. Yes. Yeah. Um, you can see that he's very much alive. He's moving. He's just doing this. He's just doing this. He hasn't clocked that you all are here just yet. Um, he's he's honestly just like looking down and he's looking at it looks like uh, uh, his binder with a with a script in it. Uh, yeah. Lane is Lane is looking at the script over his shoulder, which definitely alerts him to her presence. Oh, um. And have you all met? You've met before, uh, presumably I think many met, times. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. So Jones is very, a very sexy, uh, older, older gentleman. Um, uh, and, and he looks and goes, ah, Lane, um, welcome to my nightmare. Uh, well, hello. Hello, Mr. Consultant. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am a consultant. Yeah. Well, the I see the glue's not dry on that one, but they did put it over your name or your title. I mean, it's it was my cast. It was my thought process, and then everything got changed around, and now we're doing this. But you know, I'm I'm still team player, team player. It here. happens, honey. It happens. Hey, you, you went on TV this morning, were you? TV. How's your no, eye feeling? My uh, uh, mm, my eyes. Uh, yeah, they're, they're 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 feeling they're feeling fine. But weren't. Were you on TV this morning? Was that my imagination, or did you did you appear on? Uh, oh, just for a little thing. Yeah, it was it was it was for my old friend. Right, um, uh, a Derek, right? Uh, Darren, Darren, yes. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, duh. yes, yes. Of course, not not Derek. Um, <laughs> my mistake, my mistake. Of course. Um, I'm so happy that you were able to work with a professional director. I know you'd like to make that clear to me many times that you are a professional. And I just want you to know that. I am a retired professional. Yes. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Well, uh, you're it's... okay. I, I think, I think Lane wants to actually use a move to like figure out what's go like what, what this guy's connection to her vision is. Um, and what she's, af- I mean, I think what she's afraid of is uh, that she'll find out. Oh, great. Yeah. So um, let's make it, um, let's make it a, day move yeah let's make it a day move great um what am i rolling with for this i mean i think i think just reason right because oh no i think it would be sensitivity yeah yeah sensitivity i think that's right i think it's gotta be sensitivity all right 2d6 minus one (laughs) that is an 11 minus one wow yeah um so so walk me through it what is it that you're asking him specifically 
you know, I think she just sort of is being coy, right? As she, as she has been being like, how's your eye? How you feeling today? And just sort of like getting a little too close and like trying to suss out like, why is this man's face showing up as a like actual vision? Okay. Yeah. And so like, particularly as a day after she was asked why she like left this last show she ever did on Broadway and never would never come back to the theater, which is related. Yeah. Um, so he's got, uh, you can see like his eyes look perfectly fine, but like he's, he's it, as, as you're sort of talking to him, he's rubbing his face and he's like, it's so funny that you mentioned this because I did have this, this dream about um, losing my eyes, which I honestly just assumed it was because of the the show. Um, <laughs> I mean, the show's gonna be great. I'm so sorry. The show's gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic. It's Isn't gonna, that Oedipus, it, not Hamlet? Uh, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's Hamlet. Um, it's Hamlet. Well, but he loses his eyes in Oedipus. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I guess maybe, maybe my brain is making that connection. Yeah. I don't know. It's just so bizarre that you would, you would ask that. I don't know. Maybe it's time to leave. Maybe it's time to leave the theater altogether. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I mean, the, what Mabel is sort of showing me here is that, Maybe I'm just not cut out for this kind of young people attraction thing because I never would have done. I mean, who would have done this? This is I mean, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be Lane often condescends this guy, but she puts her hand on his shoulder, looks him in the eye with a completely sincere look and says, when things start getting this weird, it's good to leave. Really? I'm speaking from experience. Oh, well, what what? What experience do you do not let it get to your dreams? Do not it, let it interfere with the way you sleep. Your life is more valuable than the craft. Hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks. That's um, I'll keep that. I'll keep that in mind, um, you know, and uh, enjoy the show. Kill Killigan is um, is uh, is killing it. Um, it's going to going to kill it. So off we go to Kilgan's Island. <laughs> um, so we're in this theater. Um, Mabel continues to run around. Numo has given the 10 minute time call. Um, you still haven't seen the actors, but you are now sort of seeing them pop in and out. You do see the ancient Killigan Ernst, who is going to be playing Hamlet. And he is in, he's walking around shouting that he is checking his props because he wants all the kudos um, for checking that his props are in the correct place. Um, inside uh, uh, where the seats is, um, so uh, Lane is talking to Jones or was talking to Jones at uh, Galois, who is sitting in the back. Um, near the front is somebody that you haven't spoken to is that young young woman who's in her 30s and she's got a big stack of books on either side of her and it looks like she's like scrolling through lots of pages and she keeps trying to flag down Mabel but Mabel is not paying attention to her Ginger is uh, finally putting away the ladder um, but does say something to Doris to the effect of um, you know my lights didn't look half as good except when they were you know lighting your set just the way that they highlighted those, the curves of the, the cat set. It was a, it was a magical thing. Um, Ginger's and feral. <laughs> <laughs> and it, then she takes a, the, go ahead. It was a jellical thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, Doris blushes and, and like tries to come up with a good, like witty comeback and is just like, you, 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 you too. And it's like, Oh, I think that's a condition then, Doris. I'm so sorry, but I believe that you 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 be uh I conditioned myself. Flustered, flustered or something. I think Eddie got flustered last time, you get flustered this time. <laughs> it's great. Um, a little bit of fluster. Uh fantastic. Um and so uh who else is in the in the theater itself? Oh, we have the um owner of boutique antics um who is sitting there just very excited to be there and is just like he's he you can see he's getting even more amped up. Um, flashing across the stage from time to time are these actors. So you do see Wendy Wales, the young 20 something from the lobby, um, who looks very excited. And she also says to Numo, um, but she's, uh, she says very like aggressively staring him in the eye. I have checked my props, Numo. And he looks at her and he goes, thank you, Wendy. And they have this moment. And then she walks away. Um, and uh, and then Eddie Rue uh, is still there. Eddie Rue is still there. And Eddie Rue goes just like 
just like closes her own mouth with her hand after her jaw has dropped, having it having watched what is clearly sexual tension between these two young people. <laughs> uh, do we think he's checked her props too? My goodness. <laughs> uh you it, also it's shakespeare you don't really need props you don't really need anything if it's shakespeare according to this according to this pro so you don't even need shakespeare <laughs> <laughs> um patrice yellen uh the actor the stalwart community theater actor she um she comes across stage as well she has checked her props um and she sort of like talks excitedly to mabel um everything looks good and she gives like a lot of like hand gestures and high fives to people she gives a good high five to ginger um and then she says demeter thank you so much demeter we're, we're gonna do this and then she continues walking and she was talking to the 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 woman in the front row and demeter just sort of like nods and and continues taking notes while she flags down mabel mabel okay um and then just takes another note um in her book baby i think that's a that's the dramaturg <laughs> well it'd be rude if we didn't say hello i'm just saying we can go over and we the two of us sort of sort of like <laughs> <laughs> we shimmy over we shimmy over like sort of like in unison which is funny because i'm so much taller than baby <laughs> So I'm like trotting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We're just sort of like it's you for you in front. <laughs> you just hear that rustle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you approach uh, Demeter Dendry, uh, and uh, you see that on either side there are big stacks of books uh, about different horror things, and she's also got a stack of articles that she's flipping through. She has her script open, and you can see that it is highly annotated. The entire every single page is annotated with lots of different things. And she's still just like trying to flag down Mabel, but Mabel is not looking at her. Do you need some help, darling? Oh, um, hi, welcome. Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just wanted to ask Mabel about a thing, but it can wait. It can wait. Well, we can help. Absolutely. Is there anything that we can do? Let's we, we can go get Mabel for you. We're very um, persuasive. We're also good speed readers. If you need us to peruse one of these 5,000 books That's you true. have. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Oh um, no! I've I've uh, I've actually I've I've read them all. Uh, that they're um that they're in they're in the orders that they need to be. And Eddie Rue, you do see that Men, Women, and Chainsaws is right there on top. The the book that was purchased not but three weeks ago. Oh, I remember this. I remember this one. Eddie, darling, did you hear that? She's read all of them. Honestly, I'm impressed. Normally, we speak to young people and they only read half of them. But it's very nice that you've read read the whole thing. This is so lovely. Talk to you about this book. I think this is well. We, we saw Mabel pick this up for you. This is so. What an interesting cover. And I pick it up and I start like leafing through it. Oh uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, Carol Clover's seminal work about the about the final girl and about the urban versus rural and sort of this horror di um, diaspora. And it's just very it's very fun. It's very fun. It's a really great um, great great book. Um, sure, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's really informed the production. I had this beautiful display in the lobby for it, um, but uh, but th that's neither here nor nor there. Oh, and, and that is that's what that hole in the display is. Oh. Uh, well, not a whole. I mean, we just haven't figured out what we were going to do with it. Um, but I, I it, it, hopefully, hopefully we can put something there that we can all agree on. So I, I, as I place a as I place a slice of fruitcake in front of her, I just <laughs> I, I say like, well, listen, you know, if you want to, I'd love to look, I'll, baby, would you like to? Look? I'd like to look at it. I would love to any information, you know. Oh, um, well. Yeah, I mean, if um, uh, the the big thing that I'm tracking, honestly, this time is 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 the ghost face mask. So if you can just sort of watch how it sort of appears from scene to scene, because I'm trying to make an argument to Mabel that it's just it's not quite clear enough. The connection is not quite coming through. Oh, oh, absolutely, yes. Mm. I don't know if Mabel told you, Hamlet's my favorite of the Shakespeare's. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Excellent, excellent. Yes, well, welcome, well, welcome. Yes, any seat, any seat you want. I'm, I'm hoping that we can, we can work through all the issues in, in, um, and, and she looks at her watch in three days. So I sit right next to her. Oh yeah. God, <laughs> we'll just sit on either side of her. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. And she's, she's just like, oh, um, and she's got all of her stack. She's like, I'm gonna be really, I mean, taking notes and being noisy. I, I'll nope, just try to be quiet. I'll just try to be quiet. We're here to help. We do We're here to help. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. 
I'm just going to I'm just going to reach into my bag and pull out a little notebook or something that I have and I hand one identical like a field notes like I just give it over to baby and I and we both like click our pens at the same time. <laughs> uh and Demeter just sort of like looks to either side of you and she's just like, yeah, um, great, great. Um, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you want to track that also, like, because we've had so many people sort of leave the production. The other thing that I'm working on is, um, is if the double casting makes sense. I mean, in some cases it's like quadruple casting, but I think, I think I fixed it. I think I fixed it. I, we just might have to tweak a few more things if Mabel will just listen to me. So, um, but, uh, hopefully we will be starting soon and you can sort of see that things are starting to like shake out and people are, are moving and, and Mabel is sort of coming on stage and she's just like, ah, oh, excellent. Excellent. Um, and you see in the back that Xavier, uh, who is the owner of boutique antics, he is standing up and he's going, yes, yes. Yay. Welcome. I'm so excited. We're starting. Excellent. Mwah, 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 at, at Mabel. And she just goes, Yes. Okay, great. Um, so thank you um, for being here uh, for this uh, for this uh, invited dress rehearsal or preview or, or whatever you have it. Um, we are uh, doing our we're going to it's going to be great. It's going to be so it's going to be so great. Um, can we cue the last song of the um, uh, of the house music and then we'll start the show? Yeah, Numo. And Numo goes, you got it. You got it. You got it. And over the loudspeakers, you can hear, um, give me one reason to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> and Mabel goes, mm, great, great. Okay, okay. And like, she takes her seat um, and she, as you could like, uh, Demeter is like, um, uh, uh, and, and Mabel goes, hey, we, we've sat together enough. Uh, you, you seem to have plenty of, of, of people next to you. I'm going to go sit um, uh, over away. And she goes and she sits completely isolated by herself and is just like rubbing, rubbing her hands, uh, rubbing her head in her hands. Um, as the music continues to play the entire song, which is, <laughs> which is not short. <laughs> no. Um, Lane, Lane's taking a note. <laughs> Ginger is loving this song. Oh yeah, you can see Ginger who is like who's sitting um, near Numo, and she's just like mouthing the words, just vibe, vibing to Tracy Chapman. <laughs> uh, and she's like, and she like looks like directly at Doris a little bit while she sings it. Yeah, Doris yeah. is gonna, it's gonna kind of like nod back at her, like dance in her seat, grooving. What is the li- the note that Lane takes, just out of curiosity? <laughs> Too long. Song too long. <laughs> get 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 to it. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and the lights come down, and you get to see this um, this nightmare that has begun um, in front of you. So uh, true to form, in terms of this scream production, um, there is a ghost uh, with there is a. Uh, Hamlet's father with the ghost face mask on saying, you know, avenge me. Um, There is something fun done with flashlights there in the beginning. Um, But other than that, no spooks were really given. Um, It was it was it was just the ghost face mask um, and a quick like person running across stage uh, with a knife darting very, very fast. Was he talking to Hamlet over the phone? (laughs) Oh, yes. In fact, he was. (laughs) That's way better. (laughs) <laughs> the, guard, the guard's like it's for you <laughs> um yes that's exactly how it goes um one of you i think does know like mabel mooney or, or knew um hey, helen mooney pretty well um so i'm curious what you think that she used to what, what she would have thought of this production had she seen it absolute trash <laughs> she only did the classics and she was as true to the Broadway production as possible. She was a class. She was. A, she only. She staged. She staged as it would have been done in the Globe only. Mm-hmm. Like following picture by picture detail. Fantastic. But obviously on a fraction of the budget. <laughs> yeah, like I almost wonder if the costumes. You can tell that they used to be like old Elizabethan puffy shirts that someone has kind of like tried to modernize to be more hip with the kids. Once the like concept changed. Yeah. Wendy Wales has a wig that looks like Nev Campbell um, uh, as she sort of comes across. And yes, uh, I love the Jinko jeans and all of these things. But there's also the hint of the Elizabethan underneath them. I think that's great. Killigan, Killigan is dressed like um, uh, Matthew Lillard. 
in his in his 60s uh yes um he comes on stage uh and he starts his you know that they have this first scene um where patricia patrice yellen is killing it just absolutely killing it um is not floored by the fact that she is playing this guy's mother and she is 20 years younger than him she's like nope this is this is this is the job this is the job and she's doing a fantastic uh, job at that. Um, And the person playing Claudius in this first scene as well, killing it. Um, There is some very strange double casting that they're all sort of playing also like, like all of these other characters there that I'm going to blank on their names. Um, But like they're, they're all making it work. It's kind of working. Is there Um, double casting of characters who are on stage at the same time at any point? Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They lost a lot of people. They lost a lot of people. Uh, you, Hamlet's minimum what, like eight, nine people? <laughs> <laughs> Hamlet's the only one not double cast. Um, it's, uh, it is, it is, uh, he's the only one who's himself. Um, uh, but Liam, uh, Regent, who is the actor playing Claudius, as well as Hamlet's father, as well as many, many other things. Polonius. Um, <laughs> Polonius. Yeah. He's playing them all. Um, uh, he's, he's he's killing it uh as well in fact the only person who's not killing it in this uh, in these opening scenes is killigan um who looks like he's just kind of disoriented um and he is starting his first soliloquy and it is not going well so oh that this too too sullied flesh would melt and thaw and resolve itself into a do is not coming out at all like that. And he has asked for line four times. And then as he is like, kind of like closing it down and he is like, okay, finally I've made it. I've made it over this hill um, in this triumphant sort of way. And the entire cast is sort of like waiting for him to like finish this moment. A light falls upon his head from above. <gasps> he is lying oh. there on the ground and Numo is up. Lights are up. Holy shit. Everybody is moving around because yep. A light has just fallen on Killigan Ernst's head. Dungeons and Drama Nerds is produced by Todd Brian Backus, Percival Hornack, and Nicholas Orvis, and is mixed and edited by Anthony Sertel D. Our Brindlewood Bay campaign features Christopher Dierksen as Eddie Rue Dubois, Ben Ferber as Lane Walter, Corey Flores as Baby Garcia, Shannon Wade as Doris Makoviak, and our keeper, C. Meeker. If you'd like to help us continue exploring the intersection of theater and tabletop role-playing games, consider leaving us a review on your podcast app of choice or supporting us and getting access to our patron-only bonus content at patreon.com slash dungeonsanddramaters. You can find our social media and website links, including our cast bios, at the link tree in our show notes. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode of Dungeons and Dramaters.